Hello, and welcome back to the point and click devlog, an ongoing series in which we steal pretty much everything that isn't nailed down and put it all in our infinitely large pockets. In this episode, I want to talk about Kickstarter, the infamous crowdfunding website, and why I think I'm going to steer well clear of it. So even with the tiny subscriber number that this channel has and with only nine previous videos, I've already had more than one email about how setting up a Kickstarter project for my game might be a good idea. And we've all seen this before, right? Games, specifically point and click games, going up on Kickstarter in their half finished state, asking for funding and giving copies of the eventually released game to backers as a reward. There have been loads in recent years, I, th I think the most notable two in this genre being Broken Age and Thimbleweed Park. In fact, I think it's fair to say that the former and the success of its Kickstarter campaign, led by Tim Schafer, is a big reason for the resurgence in point-and-click adventure games popularity over the past decade. Almost as a show of proof of the appetite that exists out there, Broken Age launched with a goal of $400,000 and ended up raising over 3 million. Similarly, Ron Gilbert's campaign for Thimbleweed Park ended up almost doubling its initial goal of $375,000. These are games from legends of the genre though, so what about smaller projects? There's a great Wikipedia page for that, which shows pretty much every Kickstarter game ever listed. Do a find on page search for point and click and you'll see a real range of projects from people who raised nowhere near their lofty targets to people who just about met their humble sensible goals and those outliers who completely smashed it out of the park and you know i see the appeal no matter which way you slice it making a game is going to cost some money at some point in the case of my game i'm hoping to do the vast majority of the development myself so the main expense will be time, but voice acting and music will definitely be costed elements, and the idea that I could pre-fund that via Kickstarter is an appealing one. And there are also big promotional benefits that can come as an aside from Kickstarter. Gaming news sites keep an eye on new projects for example, so it's possible and very precedented that your Kickstarter project might get reported on by Kotaku or Polygon or someone, and really take off as a result. And let's face it, getting people to know that your game exists is 90% of the battle in indie gaming. But... As good as all that is, I think the Kickstarter model fundamentally conflicts with my aims here. Aside from the basic aim of shipping a functional game, I'm trying to see if a person with no qualifications in the industry, who isn't a trained artist, and who can't write a lick of code, can circumnavigate those shortcomings and still create a game by themselves and without anything in the way of funding beyond what's in their own bank account. I'm going to detail my finances for the game at some point on this channel but make no mistake this is going to be a low budget production. Beyond all that though there are other things about the Kickstarter model that to be honest stress me out. So for one what happens if you get enough backers to comfortably make the game but then no more sales after that. On release, you have to give those backers their copy. Fine, but then what if there are no more sales? It would be weird and anticlimactic if the peak of your sales came before you even finished the thing. It seems to me a bit like launching on day one and being already in debt. It's not like you make that Kickstarter money and then those backers, arguably the most interested parties in what you've made, also buy copies. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Something about Kickstarter makes what is supposed to be a fun project feel a bit too serious too. Having financial backers would come with its own stresses. Suddenly there are people you owe something to. And people are, you know, rightly quite vocal when they feel they're being misled about this kind of thing. Alongside that funding you inherit deadlines and expectations and the prospect of failure now has serious external ramifications rather than just personal ones. There are other points too, like the fact that I don't even know what I would need the money for right now, and the fact that 
I don't want to go spamming people as though I'm asking for sponsorship for doing a marathon or something. So look, I know Kickstarter has its place. And I think if you're going about your project differently to me, it may well be perfect and completely necessary for you. And that's great. Overall though, despite the fact that it does demonstrably work, I don't think it's for me. And you know, I think people sometimes default to Kickstarter without thinking about why they actually need it in the first place. In some ways, crowdfunding is becoming the de facto way indie games get made, which is kind of why I want to see how doable it is to buck that trend. Anyway, rant over, and you know, thanks for coming to my TED talk. All that waffle is only the result of my own thinking on the subject at the moment, but as with all these videos, hopefully there's some food for thought peppered throughout that other people might find useful. Before I go, I just want to announce that this channel now has a Discord server. This was suggested to me by subscriber David Younger, who I know is also working on a brilliant looking adventure game himself. I know that a lot of subscribers here are working on their own games too, so I figure this Discord might be a nice place to support one another, ask for advice, share progress, and generally foster and nurture the kind of positivity that I've seen in the comments of these videos. The link to it is in the description and I very much hope to see you there. If not, then I guess I will see you in the next one.